Tales from the Space Pod is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, I suggest you turn this wacky shit right off. Otherwise, welcome to the pod. Sorry, I had to clean up a little bit of shit. Clean up a little bit of shit. Is this dog related? <coughs> Sadly, no. <laughs> uh, it's just doll face related. <laughs> Not this week. She's doing better. Didn't take care of that gas bubble. What? Uh, oh, we'll save that for uh, <laughs> we'll save that for a video cast. What? Huh? What? <laughs> are, are you not hearing me, or are you just shocked? What? <laughs> okay, here we go. The what game? Huh? What? What? Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm not as good as this as you guys are. So, well, apparently <laughs> you are because I didn't get chopped. <laughs> Only fucking nine watts. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Skullface reached out to me, asked me to give you a little round of the uh, the what's. I really gotta sharpen my game. Apparently, <laughs> it's quite a clever game you guys have there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It's not for the uh, faint of heart, and it does take some practice, as you can see. Uh-huh. Funny, I had a friend uh, stop by last night, and she was like talking about how she's getting sick and i'm like oh that's all that sucks i never get sick ha ha, ha. she's like yeah you're probably gonna get sick now <laughs> the dreaded i never get sick never say uh, that ever <laughs> yeah i made the mistake so although odds are you didn't get it from her uh because it usually takes a few days yeah uh, but you never uh, know uh, uh you guys with us john mark you, uh john mark's still loading lolly there you talking about the flu <laughs> No oh, the flu. Yeah, don't say no. that word. Uh, it's kind of nice not not having to worry about you guys looking at my face. <laughs> you didn't seem to enjoy the video thing too well, did you? Uh, you know how you listen to your own voice and it really bothers you sometimes. I mean, I don't know. if I can't speak for you guys, but the, you know what I'm saying. Like the first time you sure. started listening back to the podcast, I really struggled watching my fucking face during that. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Um, well, we yeah, we've gotten used to our <laughs> verbal ticks over the years, but now we've got to get used to our visual ticks, and we all have them. But here's the thing: nobody really notices them except you. Yeah, um, I know. and odds are you're watching yourself the whole time <laughs> uh, instead of watching whoever happens to be talking and sort of getting in the conversation. So I'm that's, gonna just that's not how other people approach it. I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape over my own face when we do it next time. So to... Damn, son, you're a fine-looking man. What do you got to complain about? We're, we all look fucking sexy. It's no, a sexy-ass vodcast, if I do say so, my name. So, <laughs> no, I think it was fun. I think it was great. And uh, yeah, it's a little strange to be seeing. It was strange to do it uh, and be seeing it. <laughs> you guys again. You know, it was like uh, like I said on the video. This is strange, like old times ish, but. I don't know, about halfway through it, it started to feel a little more natural. And, you know, five or six episodes into it, it'll be old hat. I, yeah. I, I love it because we could see each other, you know, like uh, having those hand cues, like, uh, you know, hey, let me say something. <laughs> this is a hand job. This is jizz flying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That does make a big difference. Talking over each other. And can I say this? Hard. Why didn't anybody tell me that I am like... <laughs> With my hands when I'm talking, I had no idea. I'm like, it's like I'm conducting a fucking symphony. Yeah, you've always kind of been kind of fruity like that. We just kind of accept you as you are, buddy. I'm doing yeah. it right now. I'm like, uh-huh. I, I uh-huh. do this thing where I swirl. I make the okay sign when I'm uh-huh. making a point. Uh, <laughs> a spaceship can't just go flying by with words. My favorite thing to, to do is a, actually my, my hand go. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is just get stoned and uh, pretend you have sparklers. <laughs> oh, boy, you put sparklers. That's like uh, Joe Cocker. <laughs> what? <laughs> fire, fire. That's what I do. It's done fire. Get the fire. <laughs> hey, I need a little help from my sparkler. Uh, we lost John Mark already. Oh, boy. He's driving home, I wonder. Uh, well, he'll call in when he can. Anyway, well, if you haven't seen it already, we did post our very first video podcast on Monday. And uh, take a look. You can, as we mentioned, see us move. It's just as weird for us as it is for you to be seeing us podcasting. It's been pretty good feedback so far, and uh, we will definitely do some more soon. <laughs> Somebody thought I sounded like I had a lisp. No, I'm going to actually have some of the best of Facebook includes that, so <laughs> don't well, give it away, Ron. Well, I said, well, like I said on Facebook, I... I always kind of thought I had a small lisp. No one's ever brought it up to me. I always. Yeah, I thought sometimes... your lisp was a pretty good size. 
I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have a gap between my front teeth. <laughs> Sometimes my sibilance is a little over the top, which is the first thing to, to get digitally distorted. But if you're just if you're noticing it now on the video, but you don't notice it when you listen on the podcast, it's probably mic distortion. Yeah. Um, sometimes you, you sound a little sweet like that, but uh-huh. we're still trying to get all the tech stuff worked out. So it will improve, but overall, a uh, good start, I think. It's so funny, though, the word... Uh, <laughs> the word scrog is brought up in the video, and uh, <laughs> this past weekend I actually saw the girl that asked <laughs> no, me. Oh my god, you saw a fucking if, fucking if I wanted to scrog, scrog in the orchard. Uh, now, it was at the store, and she didn't notice me, but I kind of stopped and stared and <laughs> looked her up and down, and I thought, wow, time is a real thing. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, I'm oh. such an asshole, but. <laughs> yeah. She was, you know, she was never super hot, but. You know, she was cute, and she was, she was a sprog in the orchard hot, right? Yeah, well, age—it's uh, <laughs> a heck of a thing. What are we? Think. What are we talking about? Uh, I saw the scrog girl in uh, oh at the grocery store the other day, and she hasn't aged well. But uh, it's so funny this sort, sort of thing because when we run into people from our past and we think, "Wow, that dude's looking old," they're thinking the exact same thing about you. Uh, we don't unless they're think going, about damn, it. they're looking good. Oh, right. That's what you hope <laughs> in your brain, I'm but nine sure. times out of ten, <laughs> we have yeah. aged. Because, you know, we see ourselves aging so slowly over the decades. You know, we, uh, we're in the mirror every single morning. So it's a gradual decline. But if your 19-year-old self just woke up to the reflection of your 40-year-old self, you would lose your shit, son. I mean, lose your shit. But that's kind of what it's like for... <laughs> us to see people that we haven't seen in a long time. You're fast yeah. forwarding from that 19 year old face to the 40 year old face, and it's just shocking and alarming. It's <laughs> creepy. Yeah. yeah. Scrog. I think we can bring them shits back. <laughs> Listen, it's better than Netflix and chill. Yeah. <laughs> fuck fuck Netflix no and way. chill. It's, so Netflix. Stupid. it's now it's Netflix and Scrog for life. Well, let's, <laughs> it's Coors Light and Scrog. <laughs> Netflix. Oh, well. It's the 90s, son. It's Coors Light and Scrog, preferably in the orchard. Oh, guys, I feel like I need to give you a heads up here. <laughs> oh. I had a wonderful. Uh, let me try that again. I had a tough day. What did you do? <laughs> I'm like, what did a tough day? I woke up sick. And work sucked, and I was then I had to deal with some ghosts of Christmas past. I wasn't too thrilled about. Oh. Just one of those days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took it upon myself to self medicate when I got home, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had a very strong edible. Now I think it's gonna be fine. But you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> but maybe I should have a code word like. Orangutan. You know, if I say orangutan, you guys know I'm not in a good place. <laughs> okay. Twenty minutes later, we hear orangum up time, but I'm. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. That means nine one motherfucking one. Yeah. Send help. <laughs> I think you'll do. I think you'll do just fine. We're used to being slightly elevated, anyway. Right? <clears throat> well, the never-ending story has been brought up a few times recently, and I saw this story on Dangerous Minds, so I thought I'd share it. There's a tourist destination in Germany called Bavarian Films, and it's sort of like a Universal Studios type setup, but they have a shit ton of the original props from the never-ending story, and you can even ride on Falcor and the racing snail. Fuck yes. Uh, And you can get some pics and video while doing so. Uh, Road trip, bitches. Germany? Yeah, road trip. We're driving to Germany. Yeah, uh, yeah. They have the giant one there. They have the rock biter. I mean, how how fucking rad would it be to go see all that shit? Like the original shit. <laughs> Valcor is even more beautiful than I imagine. You know, the whole flight to Germany. You know, the only song we we'd be playing is. <laughs> Halfway through the song, Chris is leaning into the seat. Orangutan! Orangutan! Turn this fucking plane around! Get this fucking monkey on the ground! They must hear the same shitty fucking lines from that movie all day long working there. I just want to kill themselves. <laughs> I'm just going to go into the Swamp of Sorrows and drown myself with the a Trax or whatever the fucking horse's name was. <laughs> that fucking movie. Um, yeah, what was it? It was Ar- Ar- Artax? Ar- Ar- Artax or something Artax. like that. Letting the sadness get to you, Artax. <laughs> it was a fucking troubling scene that for a children's like, movie. You're watching a horse you. die by sinking make, into the mud. You make me sad. I want to die. <laughs> Spoilers, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. It's not the sadness, bitch. It's the goddamn mud. <laughs> <laughs> Poor horse. Uh, 
Stop telling me jokes. It's not cheering me up. <laughs> Don't even dare say, why are the long thieves? <laughs> yeah, well, here's a troubling and bizarre story I found. Uh, the headline tells the story, but there are deets. Teen stabs himself to death on stage at open mic in coffee shop. Oh, shit. That is word poetry that did not go well. Listen to this and imagine being in that fucking room. Kip Walker, 19, uh, took the stage at Strictly Organic Coffee in the town of Bend, Oregon. Town I know well. Uh, Yeah. Got friends and family there. No, you don't. Ben doesn't exist. Ben doesn't exist? Yeah. Is that a a going theory? Yeah, at least from one guy. You didn't see that? Is that Adam? (laughs) No, there's a, there's a you know, on the internet somewhere it was like Bend, Oregon is a, doesn't exist. It's just like all a trick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, uh, who knew? Yeah, I've been there, so I wonder where I actually was. <laughs> I don't know, man. What butthole of the universe did I slip <laughs> into? <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> that's got me all off target. But uh, continuing the story, strictly organic coffee in the town of Bend, Oregon, which doesn't exist, on Thursday to perform a song he called Sorry for the Mess. When he finished playing, he pulled out a knife with a double-edged six-inch blade and stabbed himself multiple times in the chest in front of a confused and roughly uh, a confused crowd of roughly 15 people. It was really unclear at first what was even happening because, you know, it's an open mic and it's a performance, the shop's owner, Rhonda Ely, told the local TV station. People at first thought it was some part of theater, which I think everybody would, right? Once, the, cr- once the crowd saw the blood and figured out it was happening, Happening, Walker was rushed to St. Charles Medical Center, where he died of his wounds. Now, a friend of his, who did not want to be identified, told uh, the TV station that Walker's death did not come as a surprise to him, because the teenager had contemplated suicide before and even had made mention of planning to kill himself in a public place. Mm. That's fucking rough, man. I mean, can you imagine sitting there, sipping your fucking mocha, Thursday night, open mic, maybe you got a few nerves, you're going to get up and try out some new songs in front of the 15 people out there, (laughs) we've all been there. Um, That would be impossible to process that information on the fly. It's pretty tragic. Do you think the guy that was after him was like, how am I supposed to follow that up? (laughs) <laughs> it's a great trick, but you can only do it once. Uh, it, I think that's terrible. And I, I also kind of fucking think that's unfair for, I don't know, like now those people have to live with that for the rest of the, their lives, you know, that memory. I, yeah. I just, I well, don't know. I don't think people do this sort of thing uh, when they're anywhere near a practical thinking, healthy mind. You know what I mean? Sure. So whether or not this kid did it to say fuck you to some people, I I think it's just, you know, people kill themselves when they're ill, usually. Yeah. And this guy was probably depressed, sound like, for quite a while. But holy shit. Yeah, what a disturbing situation. Yeah, changed everybody's life forever in that fucking room. Yeah. In an instant, you know? You know, how weird would it be, though? I mean, you would think, like, okay, right, those are, like, blood bags or something, and it's supposed to be, like, you know, part of a presentation or something? Yeah. Well, that's what I always think about in these situations. Sure, like squibs. You, You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and stabbing yourself. You know, if someone went up and shot themselves in the head, I think it would be more immediately oh, yeah, no, totally. aware of what... You'd be more immediately aware of what was happening. But stabbing yourself... That, Multiple times. That's too. weird, and that does seem more like... what is? Is that a gag knife? What the fuck is happening? What is he... Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, but Oof. even if it took 30 seconds, that first realization, once you absolutely knew what he was doing... Ooh. Wow. Troubling, troubling fucking night. <laughs> I have a, I have a question. Do you have, I'm sorry. Was Someone needs time? to mute their Facebook or whatever is going off, by the way. Gemma. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look into it expressly. Uh, go ahead, though. Uh, I had something I wanted to talk to you guys about, and it ties into a story I had. And it's a little grim, so I, I warn you guys ahead of time. But I, it brought up something I thought about all all my whole drive home, mm-hmm. and I, I wanted to see what you guys thought. If you were to unfortunately die in a terrible fucking accident, like a really bad one, would you want your friends, family, and or the media to know how you died explicitly? Like what like how, what you went through when you died? Like say you mm-hmm. were in a plane crash, and it was uh you know you, it just wasn't as Black and white is an explosion. You know, there was sure. something terrible. Would you want... Oh, you mean like the Challenger disaster? Yes. Oh, and that's my God. Did you guys disaster. read the details? I never read those details. <laughs> I have I have a... I, that's where I'm going with this, yeah. Oh. 
Okay. Just... Um, before we get on to that, I no, I wouldn't want anybody uh, that I care about to feel any worse than they already do about losing. Yeah. One of the greatest people on the planet in their lives, right? <laughs> they lost the monster. It's no. bad. It's a bad enough day. Uh, no, I would hate for any of uh, my loved ones to know any horrible details about my death. I don't know what the upswing would be. Um, well, I guess that's I it. I think, like, uh, like from my perspective, if if somebody super close to me died, I guess I would want to know. Like, especially if it was my partner, for instance. Mm, there's a strange curiosity on the other side of it. Um, I mean, we certainly, as survivors, we always want to know how somebody died. When we find out somebody died, the first thing out of our mouth is how. Yeah. Um, but, you know... Uh, cancer tells me all I need to know. Maybe I'll ask what kind of cancer, but car accident, and then maybe what happened. I, I don't know. Maybe some of the details, but I've see, I've thought about it in detail as far as like what what about these people whose loved ones are on these beheading videos? Would you want to sit down and watch? Like if your cousin or your brother or your mom, get your hot pocket, John Mark. We'll finish yeah. <laughs> while I'm talking about beheading your loved ones. Hey, it's it's not Somebody mine. Back, huh? Um. So, would you, I mean, it's along that line, would you, okay, what the fuck? Is someone backing up Somebody outside? smoke detectors going off or something. No, it's, it's, I think it's Adam Eagle's Hot Pocket. Uh, hot pocket. What are you going to pick? Uh, hot Pocket. Hot Pocket. <laughs> so, hot pocket. so uh, to me, it's like, I get that part of it, like the curiosity. Like, I don't know, like if I knew that one of my buddies or somebody that I really loved, like there was a video of their death. I don't know how part of me wouldn't want to see it, but I think I would f- I would fight it. I would force myself to not see it yeah. best I could. Um, I don't know. What about you guys? I, I don't think that I would want them. I mean, if the, it, okay, so if they wanted the information, they should be able to have it, but I don't think that it should be something that's forced upon them, you know? Sure. Um, because I can, I can only imagine, uh, you know, being told what how somebody that i love explicit detail how they died it's like i don't like yeah. that shit would haunt me forever you sure. know yeah, yeah. So, but, but it's for me like it's almost the opposite not knowing is worse for me because my mind yeah. would make up the details like i'd want to know mm. i think i'd it'd put me at ease it put me at rest yeah. right but, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, can, so, I can see so, both sides of this argument yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to know just because it would give me a little bit more closure, I think. If it, exactly. Like, especially with, like, Chris was saying, if it was, like, a, my partner, you know, or, yeah. you know, a family member or, you know, a really old friend, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd want to know. I yeah. really think it depends on the situation, maybe, sure. you know? Like, and, and the yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the chat, I, I, do, the... I do see both sides of it. I mean, so we yeah, are that... curious about these things, you know. That is why we ask, how did he die? What was the, the circumstances? You know, we... We we have a built-in curiosity that sometimes comes from the heart and sometimes just comes from a general, you know, what the fuck happened, you know? Ron, let me ask you a personal question, if you don't mind. Like like you mind. Come nine on. inches. <laughs> it's not nine inches, Ron. Come on. Um, <laughs> but for realsies, though, uh, like when you think about your friend Jason, that was he was stabbed to death, right? Or is that, is uh, that the, my friend right? Danny was stabbed. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever sit there and wonder, like, wish you could see what had happened? Do you ever wonder? You ever think about that? Like, no. wish you could? No. No. I I was in the trial. I was there every day for the trial, and I saw the photos of what happened, and that was uh, detailed enough for me. Um, so I was faced with some pretty horrible images of my best buddy, who I was talking to, you know. Uh, just a couple months prior, you know? I mean, th- that all happened really fucking quickly. I saw those images. I saw the wounds. I saw his corpse. I saw the color wow. of his dead fucking skin uh, oh, okay. and heard in detail how it happened. I know okay. how it happened. Uh, and I, you know, it that kept me up at night. Uh, mm-hmm. I couldn't eat for several days after seeing those pictures. I mean, I, I couldn't eat. I drank... Uh, I had to drink Insure. <laughs> I had to go get, like, Shit. a fridge full of Insure just to keep uh, enough energy to, you know, function. Because I could not put food in my mouth. Uh, it just made Damn me I'm, so fucking ill. I'm kind of feeling like a dick for asking that question, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's... A, I have no problem... You, you know me. I have no problem talking about anything. Yeah. Um, and somebody's going to benefit from all this fucked up talk that, uh, that we... You know, there's a lot... Of, it comes up every... You know, 30 or 40 episodes the darkness that is in the Ronster's past um, yeah. I mean, we all got our our shit um, I for some uh-huh. reason have been surrounded by a lot of dark shit uh, but there's really just a handful of ones that really fucked me up uh, most of them were suicides but 
<clears throat> yeah, Danny's shit was um, something I'd never experienced on any level. You know, it was just a completely different thing. Yeah. And I, even all the tragedy that came before that didn't prepare me for coping with that or seeing those pictures and hearing the testimony. Why, you're fucking, you're, you're, you're four feet from the dude that did this. And he's just <laughs> sitting there looking around. Picking his fucking fingernails, and uh, it's a lot of shit going through your brain when you're in that situation. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess maybe that's the best illustration, uh, best way to answer that question is I I, I have been blessed <laughs> with the savage details of uh, one of my best buddies' death, and I didn't. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's hard to go the other way and say, well, if I didn't know, I'd sure like to know. So I could get closure. But having yeah. known, I, <clears throat> it doesn't make closure. it. You got closure. You got closure. Yeah. Me. And I guess maybe that is a good thing. But, it's you know, it's hard to know because I, I, don't, I don't know the alternative. So Yeah. Hmm. No, well, never hesitate to ask. I, I would never hesitate to ask any of you guys anything, and I would hope that you would feel the same way. I mean, especially at this point. Yeah. First of all, we've been doing this for years. We've shared everything, uh, and, <laughs> and we're best buds. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of shows that we watch, a lot of things that we listen to where they're coworkers, and maybe they formed a bond over that. But we are all buddies. We're buddies first, uh, you know. Good buddies. <laughs> Ten four good buddies. Some might call us thunder buddies. <laughs> I'm sure that that's why we have a lot of followers, is because we have no fucking closed doors. I mean, we true. really don't. <laughs> that's why I get so fucking terrified when I find out about a coworker that started listening. Because I work for a company that has 800 employees. Mm -hmm. And I've made the mistake of telling one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I try to ignore it. Ignorance is bliss. So, yes. <laughs> well, the, the video has been getting a lot of views by people that, in my life, have never listened to the podcast. And they're all positive feedbacks that I'm getting. Some are on Facebook. Some of her texts and emails. Yeah, our, our video has more views than any of our fucking audio uploads. <laughs> oh, yeah, by far. Um, and that always... It, you know, it, I guess it doesn't bother me anymore. It used to. Um Although one of the people that tuned in is married to a black person, and uh, she's a woman, and I made a woman and a black person joke back to yeah. back in the video. Yeah. <laughs> it's I not helped. a bad one. I mean, it's I'm a, not proud of that. It's but obviously a joke. <laughs> but you yeah. set it up. That's like a fucking volleyball. I know. <laughs> we volleyed that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, kind of hijack your story there, but uh, so I guess we all answered, right? Yeah, it sounds I guess like so. you guys are leaning toward. Except John Mark. John Mark thinks uh, you should have that information available. Lyle thinks it might be healthy. And Chris, you, you're you looking at it from a curious party. You know? I, could, I see both sides for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, the reason I brought this up, and it sounds like we all read the story, was they released some... Well, I don't know if it was not released before, but it was in a story. It was new to my ass, and it was troubling. Yeah, you want to really dive into it? Released. No. Uh, you, I'm sure you've got it all there ready to go. I don't well, have anything prepared. I just have one good one good paragraph here from the story that kind of paints the picture but uh so initially you know that when you watch the video and when i watched it and even when i watched it again and again my assumption was when the explosion happened all the astronauts on board perished lights out yeah that's yeah, what just, everybody thought yeah uh, but here's if a, here's only a quote. if here's, only yeah. here's a direct quote from the article but after the disaster over time a different and more horrible story took shape the challenger made it through the spectacular eruption of its external fuel tank with its cabin more or less intact rather than being carried to heaven in an instant the crippled vessel kept sailing upward for another three miles before its momentum gave out then plunged 12 miles into the ocean no. the crew was in all likelihood conscious for the full two and a half minutes until it hit the water Oof. yeah mm -hmm. and there were more details um they okay. sort of did paint the picture of what it would be like to have gotten through that and what was well, the, one? the thing the thing is is that either way they pretty much they died instantly right i mean like they they were still alive for those minutes before they impacted but when they impacted they just they, you know it was Yes, oh, sure, but there another, there is a, a big difference between. I sure hope this goes out, lights out, and right. something's fucking wrong. What's happening? Why are we plummeting toward Earth? Why is the beep beep oh, shit, beep, oh, shit, beep beep oh, shit, beep oh, going oh, off? Why yeah, is there smoke? What's, up, what's that flame? Long? What's that thing shooting out there? Oh my God, that's Earth! Yeah, holy shit, man! I mean, really, put yourself <laughs> in that fucking position, and you. Oh, I get it, but our, still, our, like, ast our astronauts don't get nearly enough credit. You know, police 
police officers, soldiers, firemen, we all understand the bravery and on some level the craziness to take on those roles. Astronauts, you know, who knows? It's hard to uh, maybe compare someone that wants to go to the moon to somebody that's on the battlefield uh, in Iraq. And But at the same time, we don't know where space exploration is ultimately going to take us as a society. It could inevitably be just as heroic, if, if, if you follow me. Um, I know a lot of people roll their important. eyes at that s- sort of connection that, oh, who gives a shit about NASA and all that stuff? And they don't understand <laughs> silly things like the future of a species. You know, people can't. They're incapable of such abstract thought as the future. This is why we have so many fucking problems, by the way, as a society, as a colony of ants that can't get their fucking heads out their thoraxes. But uh, <laughs> this shit really brings it into focus how heroic and brave these motherfuckers are. They are flying tin cans into space with fucking focused fire behind their asses. That's what a fucking spaceship is, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have hyperdrive. We don't have, you know, laser shit and Bob Lazar type gravity amplifiers. We have flames shooting us into the fucking heavens. And people are in them cans, son. That's fucking amazing. And when you see somebody get their asses blown out of the fucking sky, that's driven home how amazing it is that we do have and have ever had people in space. Right. I uh, I actually bungee jumped off a 180 foot bridge one time. You know, I was tethered to one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, same I fucking not, thing. I could not. Um, no, it's not the <laughs> same. Thing. I'm being a. Do you imagine being like? <laughs> I can understand how those astronauts felt. <laughs> no, I was scared. I'm both not, both I was scared. as crazy to the monster. I'm sorry, Lou. You know, I still jump, but I was scared. Now, oh, sure. I, now, now, picturing myself like on a on a on a space station, outside of the thing, still tethered to something. But, you know, you're not going to hit, like, we, we jumped over water. You know, we actually would hit water and, you know, bungee back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going into fucking space, son. <laughs> I mean, there is no coming back. <laughs> Either way, you look at it, dude. That's, yeah. I mean, that takes a lot of fucking balls, man. Yeah. And then once you're up there, it's not like, ah, oh, we made it. You're in space. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you are in fucking space. And it's, you, you know, and we've talked about it many times on the show, when they send a rocket into space, they cross their fingers that they don't hit one of the thousands and thousands of satellites, uh, space, space rocks, space. space junk that we have put up in into orbit on their way out. They cross their fingers. It's just a known risk. And it's just one of these days they're going to smack into, you know, CNN. <laughs> and we'll, we'll lose CNN and the entire crew. It's a fucking miracle that that has not happened yet. There's Seriously, go find yourself a, a map of all the satellites that are around Earth right now. Uh, again, we bring this up all the fucking time, but it's amazing. It's a little alarming. We are protected, quote-unquote, by a shield of spies, ladies and gentlemen, of entertainment, of communication. It is un-fucking-canny. It's like a shield around us. It's solid. It's not dot, 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 dot. It's solid. I don't know how these things aren't crashing into themselves. Go ahead, Lyle. <laughs> there was an article I read that it was uh, something inspiring like that uh, space debris could actually cause World War Three. And it's just under the premise that, like, space debris is just coming out of, you know, into the atmosphere mm, and smacking, like, into the Kremlin. Sure. You know, so they think, well, How do you prove that it wasn't a fucking missile? Oh, wow, yeah. that's an interesting thought. Hey, it's, it's, it's a weird theory, but it's going around. I suppose one, I mean, we all have satellite tracking software now. All, I mean, you can get it as your desktop on your computer that as your screensaver um so i would trust that all major nations are tracking this stuff and maybe that would be the thing that would save us but who knows i mean how do you really tell the difference between something that was in orbit and just got knocked out of orbit versus something that was in orbit and got launched out of orbit how do you tell the difference you know i don't know i don't know if you can that's a fucking unnerving shit. This is looking to be a fun show. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into your uh, your soup du jour, which I, I understand to be as grim as it is, not, be. it's pretty grim. Yeah, that's <laughs> frustrating a, though. Yeah, I wanted to do our little space space pod Hollywood se- uh, section. I don't know if you guys had anything for that, but I have one thing. <laughs> oh, oh no, yeah, go ahead. Hollywood news from the space pod. I'm going to make you guys guess it. I don't think it'll take more than one guess. This movie famous car is going to be going back into production after more than 30 years since the last one was made. What am I talking about? DeLorean. 
It's a fucking DeLorean. They're going to start making DeLoreans again. Right. Wow. You know, now, actually, when is the last time that happened? 30 you, you years played, ago. It was 30 years ago. You know actually who made the, the DeLorean? I don't have it in front. No, I don't. No, well, DeLorean? He was the first. Uh, he was the guy that actually uh, made the GTOs. The Pontiac oh. GTOs. Yeah. Well, cool. man, one, old 66. But, yeah, he went on. He went on to doing uh, from building those, uh, and then went. I think he was he was doing some fucking fucked up shit, dude. Mm. Uh, in the DeLorean era, you know, it was a lot of, you know, I don't want to get sued, but I'm pretty sure it was a lot of cocaine, <laughs> fucking a lot of shit. Oh no, yeah, it's well it, well established. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it went fucking just downhill from there. Well, but. listen, a DeLorean is the closest thing we got to a mirrored car. <laughs> <laughs> chop chop chop. Where are you gonna do lines of them? Yeah, I love the story of the DeLorean. Now, there's a Back to the Future documentary on Netflix. Have you guys all checked that out? No. It's interesting and incredibly thorough. And they go into a whole thing about the DeLorean, the origin of that car, and a little bit about that company. And (laughs) you guys basically just encapsulated it. But I highly recommend it, even though it's not, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a, a great documentary as a film goes but it's one of those documentaries where the subject is so great that uh they hit everything you know they hit the little conventions on back to the future and the reunions and all that stuff so if you like back to the future you got to watch that i can't remember what it's called but okay so (laughs) a while back we stumbled onto the idea of stephen hawking and (laughs) strippers did we talk about (laughs) It was in a news story. Okay. Uh, See, this I, was actually something he did. Like, they, yeah. there was a story about him going, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't, you know, I'm sure this was pre-accident. Now, uh, post-accident, Ron, it's a little fuzzy. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when it comes to things involving this podcast where alcohol is involved. And what I think this is 240. 240 episodes, son. So, I, I, I suppose it's excusable, but... I did read a story today about Hawking being really into making it rain, <laughs> but uh, other things too. And, uh, you know, his wife, Jane wrote a lesson. Maybe this was a story. Uh, I'm sorry if we're repeating this, but it's been a while. His wife, Jane wrote, uh, a less than flattering account of him. And it's really interesting. I guess she had her own affairs, um, but she had Hawking's permission. I, I suppose at this point, Hawking wouldn't have been able to satisfy her. So he's like, I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> and she was off fucking dudes with his blessing, which I, I thought was really sweet. You know, I mean, that's... I, listen, I would absolutely do the fucking same thing. But eventually, Hawking started dating his nurse. And Jane apparently wrote that that nurse was beating the shit out of Hawking. Holy Did you ever hear fuck. this? Like, beating the shit out, like, breaking bones and massive bruising and cutting, lacerations. Like, type. <laughs> he was already pretty fucking ill at this point. This is the yeah, 80s. He was, he was into that, huh? <laughs> well, he couldn't really... If his computer was on the other side of the room, how do you type orangutan? <laughs> <laughs> You can't get your fucking safe word out when you've got ALS. But apparently it's a well-known fact that the dude loves strip clubs, and he's been seen all fucking over the place getting lap dances. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, we must have talked about this before, but I, and I'm probably, I probably said the same thing, but can you imagine? Okay, you're with some of, you, you're with some of your dummy pals on <laughs> some bachelor party weekend, and you stumble into pinkies on the Ave, uh-huh. and there is world-renowned scientific physicist genius theoreticist Stephen fucking Hawking drooling over some fake titties with <laughs> that perma smile that only he could produce <laughs> what yeah. a life affirming moment that would be man I don't, uh-huh. I don't know like I said I mean, we may have talked about this at, <laughs> at depth but holy shit uh, I thought that we just stumbled upon that <laughs> in a joke somehow <laughs> I do remember the graphic that I built for that show though <laughs> Yeah, proud. Oh, so good. <laughs> Say that again, John Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> um, get on to uh, tonight's monster of the week. Not really a monster, but an interesting little story. I thought this is the Satanic Gecko. <laughs> oh. You heard right, bitches. That's its actual name. Now, uh, oh, I saw Satanic Gecko open for Guar in '96. Uh-huh. <laughs> its full name is really the Satanic uh, Leaf-tailed Gecko, but it's. <laughs> Its equally flamboyant scientific name is Europlatus Fantasticus. 
Oh, of my course. God, that's amazing. <laughs> Why, that Europlatus is simply fantasticus. These, <laughs> these wow. geckos are capable of uh, looking pretty evil. Take a look at this uh, picture here. Now, Ooh. I mean, you could see that bad boy on a Black Sabbath album cover. Ah, mm-hmm. that thing is wicked Belly. looking. Yeah. His belly looks like little demon faces in his belly. Mm-hmm. It gets he looks only... like he could just chill the fuck out. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, yeah. what's up? Yeah, no, I hear you. Especially when you see the next picture I'm going to send, though. Uh, now, as for the satanic name, that was really just a marketing ploy, and it was recently, I think in the 90s, to get more people interested in the species for further research. Uh, however, there does seem to be a strange connection uh, with history on how some people use to see these seemingly magical animals. Uh, before I get into that, though, take a look at this picture. I like and this the color scheme. Well, this will. Sh- oh, this is a mess. Speaking of color schemes, this will show you what a satanic gecko looks like in full camouflage, and it's fucking amazing. Oh well. Oh. You know, when you see wow. that, is that not fucking? It's. I'll post these in the space pod at you could dot com forum, and we'll put these on Facebook. Uh, sure, as well. but the, the textures. I mean, it looks like right. Uh, That's it's crazy. not just Shit. the color. It is. It has matched <laughs> the dead late fall. It uh, looks like like a leaf. It looks like one of those magic eyes you had to fucking wonk out to actually see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Find the lizard. Now, that you can, if you, you, the easiest thing to see is its spine. You know, that's right up on top. Sure. Although it all looks like a leaf. So to the left of that is the head. To the right of that is the tail. All of that one three-piece in the middle is the lizard. None of those are leaves. That tail is flat like that. So it can perfectly represent a leaf of any color, of any texture. So a lot of superstitious people over time in the olden days, uh, and of course some religious people, were super nervous about anything that seemed magical. Uh, I mean, this is why we got the fucking witch trials, right? But animals were not exempt. I don't know if I mentioned this on the Salem witch trials episode or not, but uh, plenty of animals were killed being accused of devilry. When it was probably just fucking rabies or Sasquatch, some of them were just sassy. I am not the devil, you son of a bitch. Hey, go ahead. Now. <laughs> well, on a current note on that, uh, did you guys read that article about the the Walmart? They're going to put like right there where the the shit happened. Oh yeah. Well, they were going to right, but then they found that one of the the hills was, was the- an actual historical place where they. They see they've never known exact locations until like right now where they've been able to line them up. And it's the only thing that makes sense. They think they actually found Gallows Hill, like the Gallows Hill. And I think that was connected to that Walmart story, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, like it's like in a little lot. Uh, just out past, it's like between in the back of this house, or I don't know, it's just like this little tiny spot that mm-hmm. there's a couple of houses around it. Yeah, I'd shop at Witch Mart. <laughs> but uh, smart. now, uh, among all this accusation of devilry from the animals, geckos were again, you know, by a small number of retards, thought to be of the devil, <laughs> which is why. You know, even to the point where they look like mini dragons. Anything related to the dragon and serpentines were of the devil for a lot of people. Uh, Which I always loved. You know, tales of people or creatures being amazing or really good and talented at something. Being thought to have been from the devil. (laughs) He's better than me at something. Burn him! (laughs) He's a witch! Like, the the Egyptians also believe in God, yes? Uh, Why not assume that this person is gifted or blessed by God instead of... She's attractive, and I I want to be with her. She's a witch. She turned me down. Ha witch! <laughs> I mean, why why not given magical powers uh, by God instead of Satan? Fucking goobers. But again, many animals were killed during the witch trials, and not just black cats, which they rounded up in droves and oh, didn't just great. kill, tortured. Uh, Some of the founding fathers of this country, motherfuckers. Look them shits up. Anyway, uh, acting goofy over there, Fido. <laughs> a witch! <laughs> that horse looks sad in those uh, swamps. <laughs> Hang him! <laughs> String him high! He's a witch! <laughs> oh, God damn it! This was a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> pull him out by a rope. He thinks he's getting saved. <laughs> oh, oh, this this is miracle. You still think it's the sadness, you little cunt? <laughs> I think it's cunts. <laughs> 
<laughs> or three if you kill because he's a dragon too. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Anywho, <clears throat> this gecko was once uh, prevalent in Madagascar, but their numbers have sadly dwindled. Probably too much being burned at the tiny stake. <laughs> you imagine seeing a poor little lizard being burned at the stake? It'd be like <laughs> it'd be like a it's horseshoe it's stake. Fifteen percent. <laughs> Bar- uh, barbecue. It'd be like a little barbecue. Right? Who's got a match? <laughs> Little, 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 shish kebab, little kebab action. Uh, that's sad. Uh, what else you guys got before on to my uh, alarming soup de jour? I got a little uh, Loch Ness uh, news. Let's do it. Yeah, apparently there was a guy that uh, uh, his name's uh, Kenneth Stewart. He's a skipper. Um, he had uh, he was cruising around, you know, in the vast area of the the loch, mm-hmm. and uh, he had uh, top of the line um, ultrasound. So he's he's digging around, and he's just kind of cruising around, and he's he's realizing because the the deepest depth that the lock is supposed to be is eight hundred and thirteen feet. Yeah. Well, he, he came. He actually discovered this uh, giant crevasse. So it's just basically this like giant hole uh, down in it, and it's he came up to I think it was eight hundred and eighty nine feet. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's pretty significant for the the point, but the 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 cool part of the story is is that the first pass as they went through there was nothing there and on the second pass through there was this long uh object with humps at the bottom so that's mm-hmm. it's just kind of cool mm-hmm. they found a fast back so it wasn't there like it, there was a discrepancy in the in the sonar uh if you've ever seen a sonar readout it looks basically like what you would think with your your eye you know if you could you know just take a slice of the you know a lake or body of water or whatever you know and and look at it from an angle yeah so, it's pretty cool interesting one of these days we're gonna find one of these fucking mysteries could be one maybe these days. let's get on to my main topic uh i've been seeing this story making its rounds lately and i've been aware of it for years but and I'm sure I even mentioned it at one point on the show, but it would have been in passing or part of a list. Uh, this is the tragic and frustrating tale of the Radium Girls, otherwise known as the Clock Painting Girls. So first, a brief history lesson on Radium. Uh, a badass woman named Mary Curry first discovered the element in 1898. She was a Polish physicist and chemist who conducted pioneering research on radioactivity. Very impressive lady, especially given the time and place she was born. Uh, She was also the first woman to ever be given a Nobel Prize. Now, early on, there was hope and evidence that radium would become the main cure to all cancers. There was, you know, it was really good at eradicating tumors. You just blast the shit. I mean, this was early radiation therapy. But, you know, there was some other testing going on to make sure it was a proper cancer treatment. High hopes in the beginning. Meanwhile, the more industrial-minded among us at the time were thinking of practical ways that we could utilize (laughs) radium's glow-in-the-dark properties, which I'll discuss more in a minute. But one of these ideas was to be used on wall clocks. Now, the radium was made into a thin paint and would be manually painted onto the clocks and on an assembly line type situation. Uh, Also, it was thought that radium was a healthy... Uh, you know, if it if it could eradicate tumors, then it must be good for everything. So it started being put into an assortment of health and beauty products like soap and uh, lotion, cream, toothpaste, and even bottled water. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Elixirs. It was one yeah. of those ingredients that was just like all the rage. Like uh, uh, corn syrup. Like corn syrup. <laughs> and everyone, yeah. everyone was going cuckoo Don't for it. Don't get me started. Don't get them started. It's been a while since we had a corn syrup rant. <laughs> I know. Uh, I miss them. I'm always trying to goad them into it. i got to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> well, they came up with a snappy name for this substance, the glowing substance, called Undark, which I like. It's somehow <laughs> simultaneously a moronically simple title, yet badass name, Undark. <laughs> what do we call this shit? No, yeah. it's not dark. Not <laughs> we shall call it the undark. <laughs> not clev, but it works. I mean, the stuff glowed in the dark after all. But you can imagine the marketing machine behind something like this, you know, back in the day. <laughs> Wash your teeth with Flash Gordon Martian paste, kiddos, 12 times a day, eh? <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, interesting side note. Radium itself does not actually glow. It's only when it's mixed with certain other chemicals that it glows. Uh, now, listen to this. I wrote this down. This is a detailed reason why it glows 
As it decays, radium releases particles that ionize nearby materials, creating positively charged ions that pull other negatively charged electrons from other nearby atoms. Does that sound like something you want to brush your teeth with, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> but the, um, <laughs> Now, I didn't read that to you to, to explain it clearly or even make you feel stupid. I kind of just thought it was a brilliant example of how fucking intelligent we can be as human beings, you know? Uh, I mean, it's alarming the differences because think of people that are able to figure out why a ra- uh, radium glows when mixed with certain elements versus that <laughs> chick that was shoving whiskey up her ass in front of her f- six year old boy in the liquor store <laughs> yeah. that you shared in one of your news quiz stories. <laughs> this is the dynamics of human nature. Yeah. It's a thing to behold. Uh, <laughs> And uh, wow, you, you really put things into uh, perspective from your own. It's broad. It's a broad uh, fucking spectrum. Uh, uh, but by studying it and experimenting, they figured out that so it was cool. a process of its own decaying that made it glow. That's fucking science, son. Uh, listen, guessing <laughs> what's in the core of the earth or uh, hypothesizing what's in a black hole, not science. That's it. That's educated guessing, and we used to call that hypothesis. Now we just call everything science because we all follow Neil deGrasse Tyson and I fucking love science on Facebook. So we're all scientific minded people now. I still haven't seen a single episode of that or a single thing of that. Listen, by the way, (laughs) Neil deGrasse Tyson live tweeted scientific errors from star Wars as he watched it. (laughs) Bravo. You fucking hero. Uh, Why don't you explain how unlikely it is to be able to trap a ghost by vacuuming it in fucking ghostbusters or uh, (laughs) how there's no solid evidence that, there's ever been fucking transforming robots on the moon. It just sounds like the fun police. Fucking hero. Fucking modern... <sighs> modern science. Shut the fuck up and cure cancer or get us back to the I fucking can, moon or stop can, climate can, change. How about you do them shits before killing an evening? Debunking Star Wars. <laughs> hey, debunking I, I Star it. Wars. It, I, I get it if it's a movie like Gravity or something that's supposed to be realistic, yeah. you know? Um, and if he's want, he, if he's talking about, uh, you know, uh, orbital mechanics and shit like that, but it's fucking with Star Wars. It's, it's, Star it's, it's, Wars. it's space fantasy. It's not supposed no. to There's be a space realized. monkey it's flying not... a spaceship. I yeah. say it all yeah. the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah, you don't debunk dumb. Star Wars. I mean, come on. He's going to start losing people. You know, he's he's become this, like, scientific rock star, and he's getting so fucking cocky and just <laughs> pushing it and pushing it. It's this like, is how, dude. This is how arch nemesis are born, Ron. You sound like the... <laughs> I'm like going to become s- super scientific guy. Oh, I'm not the guy to do that. <laughs> you just need to calm down and then... To <laughs> yeah. I think Lyle wins this uh, argument. <laughs> 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 I saw that, and I was like... Really, you're scientifically debunking Star Wars? Come on. Let the kids have fun, for fuck's sake. Uh, Anyway, going back to the clocks. In New Jersey, at the uh, U.S. radium plant in 1917, things were pretty bustling. A few thousand women were employed with uh, the simple task of painting this glow-in-the-dark paint onto pocket watches watches and uh, clocks. But, you know, they're painting pretty detailed work with uh, a tiny paintbrush and it required little artistic talent but certainly a steady hand so it took a skill and it was a pretty good paying job for a woman to have back then i mean uh, compared to other factory jobs this was the 19 early 1900s so uh you know females usually got the short end of the shaft <laughs> god they're still getting do you guys read the shit about uh, scully still being offered like I don't know if it's half, but way less than what uh, Mulder's being paid yeah. to the X-Files. Like, yeah, that was what that. was going on in the 90s. Still, they still wanted to give her way less than Mulder. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. And we're still paying people less because they don't have a dick. Well, it's not even that. It's I mean, crazy. Look, look at Friends. You remember Friends when they did the last like season or whatever? They are getting paid, like, fucking God knows how much money, dude. Each of them. So it's not a sexist yeah. thing. It's, a, it's all about the, you know, I don't know. I don't understand he's, your friend's reference. They were all, I thought they all took the same amount that they required. They did, but I think he's yeah. saying that it's not universally... It was like 15... Uh, that all women get paid less. Yeah, episodes. sure, it's not always the case, but why would it's you... Rare. Not, I think it's rare. I think it's safe to argue that Scully is as important to the X-Files as Mulder. I think that is a fair yes. argument, yes. Um, would you have been happy with a Mulder-only X-Files, where they bring back Andrea? Remember Andrea from uh, Walking oh, Dead was... Uh, 
yeah. they tried to use her to fill in for Scully when she was pregnant or whatever. Oh, what? I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I need to go back and watch <laughs> like, them shits. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, ridiculous. Uh, in an ensemble, you know, or a, a duo like that, you pay them equally or you're going to have problems no matter what it's based on. But when yeah. the man gets more and the woman gets less, you're automatically going to assume it's, it's sex, right? I mean, you cannot give Scully less than Mulder. Yeah. It's not. It's not like either one of them are, were a bigger star. I've seen Scully popping up more on big shows and, and films than I have Mulder over the years. You know, I mean, right after X Files, you saw Californication and some stuff, but he kind of faded away for a little while to some degree. But I, I would say that they're anyway. I'm getting off on a side tangent. But it's just depressing that that can still go on. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's hard to say that it was because she's a woman, but I don't know. Uh, anyway, so this was a good job for women. That That's key to where we end up going. Um, because they could be making half as much money in a restaurant or in a factory. There wasn't a lot of jobs available for women. That's why it was such a badass thing for that woman. Uh, Mary Cures, I think, with the, the woman who discovered radium. She was... Doing them shits in uh, the 18... I mean, she was born in the 1800s. So anyway, uh, the job satisfaction was pretty high, especially for how boring this work was and repetitive. Apparently, the average girl would paint around 250 dials per day. So that would be some repetitive shit. Uh, That is until the girls started getting ill. Now, the first symptoms were uh, like dizziness, body aches, tooth pain, fairly mild stuff. But after a while, it seemed to be getting significantly worse, and it was spreading. Nasty, serious shit, like uh, anemia. And many of the girls were getting this horrible thing where their jaws were just breaking under the weight of their mouth. Like their jaws were just snapping. Uh, Or from, you know, common everyday movements, bumping into something, and it was just... Their jaw was broke, just like that. In some cases, their jaws were literally falling off, son. There's some pictures of these poor souls where their jaws were dangling, only connected by flesh. Uh, Now, if you're asking why, at this point, everyone wasn't fleeing this place for dear life, first off, again, it was a different time. (laughs) They were getting paid well. And it wasn't just as easy uh, for a woman especially, but for anybody back then, it wasn't just as easy as quitting and finding another job that paid that well. And we, at this point, we're heading into the Great Depression. Uh, Also, there were medical checkups being offered to the workers by the factory, including free x-rays, and they were all told that whatever was happening by doctors, they were told whatever was happening had nothing to do with the factory. They blamed everything from a virus to mass hysteria, and even more insulting, they started accusing the women of being sluts and that they were all suffering from STDs. Wow. Nice, huh? Fuckers. So you can see how shitty of a spot these poor souls were in. Uh, but there was no denying that many of the girls seemed to be fine. So it was puzzling. Now, by this point, word was starting to get out to the media. And uh, they were coming around asking about it. And the factory held press conferences. And they showed the results of their in-house medical examinations, which concluded that they were all fine. Uh, they even brought a, a radium expert in to demonstrate how safe everything was so the media sort of backed off but the illnesses just got worse and worse well some of the workers did their own looking into it to try to see what the healthy girls were doing differently than uh the ailing ones and the answer became pretty fucking clear now as i mentioned earlier they were using a very fine paintbrush for this work uh and you know to do the heavy texture of the paint many of the girls would put the the brush in their mouth because it would become dull. Like it would smash. They would lose their fine point. It would smash up the bristles. So they would just take it straight from the clock to yeah. their mouth, give it a little twist, and then they would have their fine point again. Wow. Uh, many of the girls put the brush in their mouth to give it a twist. However, uh, some of them did not do this because they found the texture to be unpleasant or the taste was bad. And this was a practice, by the way, that was even encouraged by the girls' bosses. Um, but some of them just refused. They would you know, twist it on a paper towel or uh, on their hand. Lucky them. Now, keep in mind, we are well aware of the power of, a radi- of radium at this point because <laughs> the people handling the radium while refining it into paint at the factory did so from 
the safety of lead shielded gloves, aprons and goggles. And then they would, I mean, <laughs> these men scientists would then hand the women paint and say, oh, uh, to sharpen your brush, just put it in your mouth and give it a little spin there. <laughs> I mean, Fuck. put it in your mouth. How about them shits? Uh, so wow. these girls were slowly being poisoned with toxic radium. And radium has a major impact on the bones when ingested, and that's why so many were losing their jaw. Now, the jaw is a fragile uh, conjunction of thin bones. All along the jaw region, it's, it's a lot of small, thin bones that sort of are layered like lasagna, if you will. So when the radium went in there, that was like the first place it just deteriorated, and you no longer had a jaw. By the way, there's no place, there's no way to fix that other than just putting in... Uh, I mean, they tried metal springs, but basically they just had to wire your jaw shut and you had to eat mush for the rest of your life and talk like, eh, because there's no way to move your heart out. But you didn't have to live that way for long because you were dying anyway. <laughs> By the God way, damn. they also came to <laughs> On call... the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> they also came to call this uh, particular circumstance radium job. Hmm. So a small number of women sued the company. I got a, I got a little radium job when I was having them relations the other night, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, radium? <laughs> damn near killed them. I, I, I'm kidding. What kind of relations do you do? <laughs> Public. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very small group of women. That was good <laughs> Most people, uh, that, most of the girls wanted, I mean, remember, this was thousands and thousands of girls. This was a huge factory, and it was pretty much going around the clock, uh, <laughs> accidental pun, but n- almost none of them wanted anything to do with the lawsuit. Most of them didn't, even when they were dying, they didn't know they were dying, but they were pretty fucking ill. They didn't want to quit their jobs. Huh. Again, go back to the politics of the time and the situation that these women were in fucking heartbreaking on so many levels. But, uh, four or five of them ended up, five of them ended up suing and, Again, the company pointed to the medical examinations that they conducted. Well, as it turns out, those weren't real x-ray machines, and those weren't real doctors looking at the women. Many times, by the way, fully nude, and many times being fully fucking probed, if you know what I mean. Not real doctors. They were representatives of a uh, disinformation scheme set up by the defense contractor. We know this now. This is not conspiracy theory. This is fact that all eventually came out. Again, nice, huh? Uh, this is what they're doing to the women uh, in their community. These aren't, you know, it would be horrible to do to anybody, but these aren't criminals. These aren't terrorists or uh, foreigners, God forbid, uh, back in the day. These are just fucking moms and sisters and daughters, and we had no problem knowingly doing this to this uh, to these people. The, the solution was cover it up and keep her going. Um, which is no, it's nothing new. You know, this is Aaron Brockovich shit, uh, you know, a hundred years earlier, almost. Uh, but anyway, so they just sort of poked around and, uh, you know, prodded the girls, felt them up. <laughs> I'm sure took every advantage they possibly could, pretended to take x-rays, wrote fake reports and back to work, bitches. That's all they did. Jesus. And fake reports went to, uh, the court and that all came out eventually but a total of five factory workers grace fryer these are hero names ladies and gentlemen so i'm going to read them all grace fryer edna hussman katherine schaub and sisters quinta mcdonald and albina loris uh dubbed the radium girls they all joined the lawsuit many of these girls by the way were too sick to get out of bed at this point a, te- a couple of them testified from bed all you could see was their pathetic right hand being raised to be sworn in uh, they were dying, but no lawyer would take the case. Five women against a large defense contractor and this big corporation. Uh, and again, we we're coming off of World War One. You know, we've got this get her done for the boys mentality um, that e- even a lot of the women working at the factory were against these women suing. The horrible situation that these people were put in and they couldn't find legal help. Finally, after years of trying while they were dying uh, and doing their own begging and pleading, they successfully sued and they ended up with a grand total of $10,000 a piece, which translates to about $150,000 today. Little compensation for a slow death from radium poisoning. Um, One good thing to come from this horrible event is this case was a main factor in the establishment of the occupational disease labor law. So if there can be one tiny sliver of sunshine in there, that's that. But uh, 
Of course, radium, radium mania was over, too, once all this made the papers. Fortunately, the amounts of radium in the soap and toothpaste and all that were much lower uh, than in the glowing paint. So there really weren't many major incidents with all that. Uh, now, to me, the creepiest part of this whole thing is to this day, if you run a Geiger counter over the graves of the women who died from the radium poison from these clock factories, the needle will still ping. How ah, fucking sad and gross is that? That is haunting. Standing on the grave, you can get a meter that will show you the toxic levels of radium in that decayed corpse. Ugh, I mean, we're, we're approaching a hundred years in some of these cases. You know, uh, your whole story reminds me of. Uh, I'm not sure if you know this, uh, but uh, in the, the 18th century, they used to use uh, mercury mixed in with gold. So mm-hmm. when they painted stuff, mm-hmm. they they would do heirlooms, they would do uh, goblets. Um, a lot of the things were clocks. Yeah, and, but it, what it does would it would give the bronze kind of like a the a gold shiny shimmer. Mm-hmm. Um, it ended up killing about everybody that fucking worked it's same it's, it's not the same but it's it's different everybody was dying of mercury poison yeah and uh this um you, you've heard about the the mad hatter um the, what's a mad hatter well the mad hatter oh you mean Alice in alice in wonderland yeah oh yeah so you're um, fucking different behind, well, i thought right? he was referring <laughs> to like, like uh, cock, you're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was too obvious yeah go ahead uh, they, they used to use the organic mercury uh, to do hats when they'd, they'd shape hats and that's a lot of people would lose their teeth and and get ill because they were all dying from mercury poisoning that was like oh, you're the saying that's where the term mad hatter came from that's where it actually yeah developed oh, its that's name. interesting i didn't know that yeah, yeah. so that's a, good it's a real deal. Yeah. very interesting uh one more footnote on there that uh lady curry she died in 1934 at 66 in a sanatorium uh due to uh, a plastic anemia, which of course was brought on by her exposure to radiation while carrying on the testing of uh, radium. So it ended up being a pretty nasty, nasty uh, substance. Fucking tragic tale, huh? And these girls yeah. were just, if they just didn't put the brush in their mouth, they probably wouldn't have been okay. Even though they were getting it on their skin, um, you know, mild radium poisoning, once they moved on to a different job, they probably would have been fine. But the ones that were putting it in their mouths for hours and hours and hours, for days and weeks and months, years in some cases, too late. They're still firing Geiger counters in the ground. <laughs> Ugh. Wow. Imagine going to visit Grandma with the Geiger counter, and it's like, <sighs> silence, tick, silence. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> Fucking creepy and heartbreaking. Anyway, let's get on to something fun. How about some news-ass quiz? Can I do an uplifting kind of palate cleanser story? Uh, you, as long as you make it super uplifting. It's super quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I seriously want these. You know, as okay. a kid, you know, watching watching the uh, fucking uh, Karate Kid, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I've yeah. always had infatuation with bonsai trees. I really have. Oh, yeah. I've never face and I got obsessed with bonsai trees a while ago. I we had so one. many plans to make one. Here, go ahead. Now, now look at this. I just sent you a link to a video. Okay. Now you could own your very own oh, levitating bonsai what? tree. It's levitating joke. bonsai tree. Yeah, How is this, I would uh, is this happening with magnets? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got to be. It's just rotating magnets. You know, it's just wow. That is but gorgeous. It's levitating and it's living. How fucking cool is that, dude? Well, okay. To describe, we'll post this on the forum and the Facebook page. But to describe, it's like a little. Well, like a little dome that's sort of reflective on the uh, your desk or whatever, and then there's a an array of different styles, sort of topiary balls, some tiny little like crab apple trees. Uh, but I guess before moving on, uh, there's probably a lot of people that don't even really understand what bonsai trees are. They are trees that are specifically cropped and trimmed and trained to grow like larger trees, but. In a minute, but they're not just you know baby trees. They they look like old growth trees. They're fucking gorgeous, and they I think the oldest one is like I don't know, a thousand oh, fifteen hundred years, right? What? Every moment you talk, I slip closer to a orangutan, bro. Can we get some news, <laughs> quiz? <laughs> All right, I'll stop gushing about bonsai trees. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kept, I kept waiting for orangutan at some point. Orangutan. <laughs> it's, it's getting bad. Every which way but loose. 
Suzanne. Uh, you, this is a Kickstarter. This is a Kickstarter. Go watch a Nirvana you concert actually, or something. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. <laughs> you could uh, you could buy this, and it's it's just a fictitious tree for two hundred dollars. Yeah. But for five hundred dollars, you could get a real kit that actually it's does a fictitious a tree. <laughs> what the fuck? A dude it's wrote it. A, it's a fake tree. <laughs> That's a fake. Too That's a great way to say. It. Yeah. Fictitious. Huh? It's, it's a fake. Like I said, you, yeah, for the some more of it money, did look like a, like I said, a like a craft store topiary, but uh, very interesting. I, I can see that going way beyond bonsai tree uh, uses. You know, like a spinning magnet thing, all sorts of like little sculptures. As an artist, can you imagine like a, th those in a gallery where your three D sure. sculptures are rotating in front of people while they're levitating? I see a yeah, lot of interesting like, artistic and creative it? practical uh, uses for that technology. <laughs> magnets just, just float, floating dildos that'd be pretty sweet a dildo spinning spin around just sit on it son you don't need no batteries yeah, like, you're using magic power nine, it's like a nine inch nails vid <laughs> um, <laughs> all right uh let's get on to a rank i mean uh, news quiz <laughs> oh god okay um yeah here is the order you're playing and again we're just playing for pride we're gonna change things up and how we do prizes we have some stuff coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. uh, until we do that we're just gonna play for pride so ron you should do well yeah i should because nothing mm -hmm. means more to me <laughs> <laughs> than me <laughs> than my pride <laughs> no just every time you play for you you always do well that seems like it uh-huh all right uh, okay, here's the order you're playing. John Mark, you'll be going first tonight. Lyle, you'll be second. And Ron, you'll be the tail end, buddy. Oh, I like the tail end. You're going front to back. Mm, you son of a... <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? It always takes right. me a minute. Uh -huh. Yeah. To hold up a hand, make the L sign. Question one. The World Economic Forum has recently put out a study they did about how robotics and artificial intelligence is going to change the workplace landscape. Mm -hmm. And they're predicting by the year 2020 that robots will basically kill off about 5 million jobs. Mm. They, and they think the majority of this, in fact, they think two-thirds of this, are going to be jobs that are lost by this group of people. Is it A, women? Boy, that's interesting. <laughs> what we just came from, huh? -huh. Is it B, minorities? Yeah. Or is it C, programmers, specifically from India? <laughs> huh. You had to throw in that specific. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm. Indian programmers. <laughs> right. Jamar? <laughs> I love women. Jump did you say? Did you say women, minorities, or Indian programmers? <laughs> That's <true. laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. Uh, sure. Right, dang. <laughs> dang, I don't know. Uh, well, shoot. I these are all horrible options. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chris really uh, fucked this one up. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> orangutan. Let's go. Orangutan. Uh, <laughs> take me to my happy place. Let's go with. Uh, I'll, I'll say women. You're gonna go with women. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Leave that. I'm gonna go with C. I think it's probably C. Programmers. Uh, specifically uh, yeah. Yeah. I. I'm gonna go with my gut and feel that uh, the specific <laughs> the specificity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, orangutan. The specificity <laughs> of uh, that answer is a ruse. I'm going to go with women. Hey, women as well. it fits okay. with tonight's theme. That's fair. All right, question two. Last week, uh, Xbox servers went down, and this celebrity took to YouTube to let Microsoft know how they felt about it, even claiming they might make the switch to PlayStation. Who are we talking about here? Hmm. And I have the I'll have an audio clip to play for it, and you'll distinctively know this person, I believe, from the others. Mm -hmm. The A, Jonah Hill. Okay. B, always use a double G, Snoop Dogg and Dog. Dang. <laughs> or, is, or is it C, Seth Rogen? Hmm. John Mark. Uh, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say. Uh, Fuck, I don't know, man. Uh, Twitter. Hmm. Uh, Jonah Hill, I guess. Going with Jonah Hill. The money ball. Okay. Lily Pat? Sorry about my, sorry about my sn snot, like, sniffle there. <laughs> I, I sniffle. Yeah. I'm going to go with Snoop Doggy Dog. This is a, a double J. 
<laughs> All right. I, too, will go with double B. I feel <laughs> like it might be a ruse of a rizzoos. Rizzow. So, I'm sorry, what, can you could you speak Ron, Ron straight English again? What are you picking? I'm going with B, sir. <laughs> Here you go, Snoop Diggy Dog. Perfect. <laughs> Snoop Diggy Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, my jive wasn't the proper jive. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop right, diggity thanks. dog, eat dog. Question three. I've been seeing a ton of videos uh, going viral of creative families removing pesky baby teeth with less than conventional methods. Once this video made the news and caught my eye, and I thought it was pretty awesome, in it, uh, the father ties one Excuse me. The father ties a string to one of his children's baby teeth and ties the other end of the string to this. Oh, Dick, better be one. (laughs) Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, sorry. (laughs) All right. A. Tied the other end to the family dog who was patiently waiting to be (laughs) fed. Oh, that is that is fucking brilliant. Is it B? That's better than a door. Yeah. Tied the other. Have you ever done that? The door. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me too. I don't know that there's nothing I've not tried when it comes to pulling out a tooth. I hated yanking a tooth out. I knew a lot of kids that loved it. Yeah. I hated it. Freaked me is out. It, is it B, tied the other end of the string to a champagne cork and popped the bottle? Hmm, that's risky. <laughs> or is it C, tied the other end to a Nerf gun arrow and pulled the trigger? Nerf gun arrow and pulled the trig. Huh. Yeah. All right. Jump. Hmm, I'll go with the hmm, um, I'll go with the dog. I'm gonna go. I, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what is with your human and hot? Is, is the fucking tree beard playing tonight? <laughs> hmm, oh, hmm. Seriously, the, the nerd gun, it's safe. Yet not really, <laughs> you know. I don't, I'm, I'm going to go with C. Well, I don't. I'm not familiar enough with the Nerf rocket to know the force behind that. I imagine if it's a pretty far well, gone tooth, a, you're going to be okay. Not, but the dog is a bona fide winner, son. I am going with the red rocket running to its dinner all the way. <laughs> Fucking red rocket running to its dinner. Listen, Amazing. a dog, a dog out of a kennel heading toward its supper is a bull out of a shoot, son. With its <laughs> ads in a noose. True. Trust me. Excellent. All right, so we have a new. I'm adding a new rule to uh, news course. This is an important one. There's only a few rules really about questions. We have sure. it on the floor today. Sure. Doubles worth two I points. Can't, I can't wait to overrule it. Whatever it is. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your pants, Ron. We'll see where we're going. <laughs> the other, the other rule that I only actually brought uh, used once is any question about weed can be worth three points. Oh, I don't weed, remember that. Weed. Yeah, we did that in one one episode, and I've huh. remembered it ever since. Yeah, we forget all sorts of bits. Again, drink and pot. But there is a new rule I am enacting tonight. It's the Kanye rule. Okay. If there's a question and Kanye is an answer, it's a gamble. It's a risk-reward situation, because if you get it right, if you choose Kanye and it's right, you get two points. Okay. But if you well, you know, Kanye, I'm going to let you finish this, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, are you going where I think you're going? You're going to deduct us, son? If you choose Kanye and it's wrong, you lose a point. I like this. Question four. <laughs> this Kanye. <star. laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I love that that stupid joke got that much of a laugh out of you. <laughs> Biggest laugh of the night. Dumbest joke. <laughs> It was so I'm going to say it for you, Chris. I rang a date. Fuck. All right. Okay. Question four. This star recently came out to, uh, to, wow, to the defense of Bill Cosby and all of the sexual assault charges being brought against him. Oh, the star yeah. was quoted saying, only God can convince him that Bill Cosby was guilty. Hmm. Who are we talking about here? Okay. Is it A? <laughs> Don't fucking start shouting, Kanye. <laughs> Yeah. It's going to be tough a. to choose Kanye now. Oh, go R. Ahead. Kelly. Ooh, R. Kelly. Oh, He's oh. still a guy. <laughs> Did we give up on that douchebag? He peed on <laughs> the teens, right? He pees uh-huh. on. We are weird people, man. We are. It's so fucked up, but we will forgive. I, I figured he, he. at least you could appreciate that, you know? I can, but fuck. 
Not because of his smooth grooves. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I'm you. I can relate on uh, all those levels. Is it B? What Kanye word? West. Oh, Kanye. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe B. Question B. Uh, oh, you slay me. Or is it C? Hugh Hefner. Oh, okay. Well, Hugh is old, and old people will say anything because they have nothing to lose. Oh, boy. Let's let All right, let's John Mark first. Kanye West. Holy Bold. shit. John Mark just pulled his dick out. And I don't the know table. where to go with this because would Chris use Kanye that? as his first Kanye gamble? <laughs> well, why wouldn't he? Because it's like the rules. Oh, because he's a uh, bitch when it comes to this shit. He tries to trick us, son. Oh, uh, yeah. And he usually does. I, I'm thinking, well, well, he uh, usually tricks me. <laughs> you, put, <laughs> you put anything ridiculous in there or cube, and I'm choosing it. Uh, yeah. I'm listening. I'm fucking <laughs> retarded. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. Or is it I'm, C? I'm, cubes. <laughs> Cube <Cube-yay>. yay. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Wow, I think I'm, my whiskey might be catching up to your pot and <laughs> cold medicine. <laughs> Lyle, give it to me, baby. Give it to me, Lyle. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm, I'm gonna try not to lionize it too much. <laughs> lionize it. <laughs> lionize it. <laughs> Does it need a whole new word? Hugh, Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner. I, I just don't. See him. You bust your I, own fucking coined phrase. I, well, <laughs> it was named after you, I was son. I was trying to match yours. All right. What? I forgot what you used to call it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm thinking Hugh Hefner might, you know, just because yeah. he's an old guy. And yep. he, oh, Bill Cosby, you know, come on, it's the Bill Cosby. Where's Dolph? <laughs> oh, God, where's Dolph? <laughs> <Dolphin? laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, he, I, you know, he's never perceived as a very fucking bad guy back in the day. You know what I mean? He was like one of the most uh, crucial fucking comedians that were, he was epic, you know, and he never had to cuss, you know. In his in his in his gig, you know what I mean. So I could see maybe Hugh Hefner might, you know, reflect back on those days mm-hmm. and say, "Oh, not in my mind." <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna go Hugh Hefner. Go yeah, you. yeah. Go Beautiful baby. Very interesting. Um, boy, let me think on this. Um, you remember the first guy got used to pee on people. I <clears throat> am afraid to go with Kanye, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Hugh Hefner myself. Yeah. All right. I think okay. old old fucks kind of stick together when it comes to being accused of fucked up shit. <laughs> and pretty soon, they're both going to have dementia to claim. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's I know, a, lo- I know a lot of g- girls. Uh, I don't know how I've ended up knowing a lot of girls that work in convalescent centers, but I do. And every one of them has been completely fucking molested by old dudes. Every one of them has seen an old dude coming... <laughs> Because they jack off in the tub when they're being sponged, uh, or they Jesus time it when they Christ. come in to change the fucking sheets or give them the medication. They have all been <laughs> came on by old dudes. Does that just it's give you alarming. so much to look forward to, Ron? Fuck yeah, I cannot wait. <laughs> Listen, son, let's just say that the car accident last year was not her fault. <laughs> oh, I saw that car coming. Put me in a fucking home, son. I'm demented. <laughs> it's going to come and grab all day. Face me! <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Pay no attention to my faculties. My faculties cannot be judged or trusted. <laughs> Pay no attention to my faculties. What the fuck? <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. I'm gonna burn in hell. <laughs> and I'm gonna come on a lot of orderlies before I get there. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Holy shit! Arrested. Wowza. Okay. Where the fuck are we? Answers. Answers. <laughs> Question one. Uh, the World Economic Forum has recently put out a study that said robotics and AI is going to kill off 5 million jobs. Uh, roughly two-thirds of them will be women. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We have any one, son. Secretarial. Um, there's other, I don't know, there was other fine points mm-hmm. to it, but marketing and, and... Oh, yeah. I would like to know the stats on women versus men uh, modern times and pay for the same jobs. Uh, every time I hear anything about it, it seems like there's still a uh, discrepancy. Hmm. But who knows? It's just a bummer. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, crazy. This world, this world sucks. Okay, this is this is funny at least. Question two. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, John Mark and Ron got that correct for a point of pop. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, last week, Xbox services went down, and this this celebrity got online, put a little video together real fast, kind of voicing their displeasure. I'm just going to play it for you here. A message to Xbox One or Microsoft or whoever the fuck y'all fucking server is fucking whack, man. Y'all going to make me switch to PlayStation if y'all ain't going to get this shit fixed. Word. <laughs> What the fuck is you doing, Bill Gates? Oh, I love that. Uh, yeah, this new well, dog all well, stoned better. at home in the fucking Beverly Hills, having issues with his <laughs> egg <Exactly>. ziggity box. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't play my fucking shit. What do you think he's playing? What's he trying to play? What are you supposed? Did he say? Call of Duty. I, I would I would imagine. <laughs> Call of Diz Ziggity? <laughs> mm. oh, nice. Man. I know I got That's... that right. Yeah, Lyle and Ron got that correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fix your shit, Bill Gates. Dang. <laughs> the Xbox One, Bill Gates. Who else the fuck is out there? You've seen the stuff where Snoop Dogg is narrating nature mo- or nature videos, yes? I, I don't vaguely remember oh, that. It's fucking hilarious. Now there's a petition uh, to get him to host an entire hour of nature programming on uh, one of the you know, like Animal Planet or something. <laughs> By the way, change.org is a fascinating place to scroll through just to look at the ridiculous petitions. It's kind of heartbreaking on one level because there's some shit that we really should be rallying against for change. And then you'll see like 10 times as many votes or uh, pledges for something like this <laughs> to get Snoop Dogg to narrate shit. You know, there's like a bunch of tons of like bullshit, silly petitions uh, or stupid petitions to get Cam Newton banned from Century Link Field. Fuck, that pisses me off. Embarrassing stuff like that. And it's it's change.org. It's, these are like real petitions. We will take, we will stop what we're doing and take our time to do this embarrassing stuff, but not get behind like real shit. Again, the the dynamics of human thinking is endlessly baffling. Uh, uh, question three. Uh, I saw a really fucking awesome video about how uh, one really cool dad removed a tooth for his little girl. And uh, I'm going to send you it over here on the uh, Facebook chat. Mm. It's a little gif. It's pretty impressive. Okay. There's a whole little write-up in a, in a story with a ton of other cool videos on how this is being done. Oh, that looks like a... Oh, wow, that's a Nerf gun, and that's... See, now, if, had I seen, or had I had knowledge to how powerful that Nerf gun is, that... I, mean, I don't want to sound old. <laughs> I never want to sound like that on this podcast. But that looks like something that would take an eye out, son. You uh, obviously never had much Nerf gun in it's your Nerf. life, bro. <laughs> oh, I never had any guns uh, with Nerf. My, To me, when I realized that there were other things than the Nerf football and basketball. I was shocked. <laughs> I mean, listen, the Nerf gun thing didn't get going until I was in high school or junior high, so I wasn't playing with fucking toys. But when I was a kid, I was playing the fuck. I loved Nerf footballs because I could spiral them motherfuckers like a son of a bitch. Laces out, of course. <laughs> I just can't What's, imagine your fucking child. Like, I just picture you in the no. backyard with this fucking hula hoop with this stupid <laughs> grin on your face, like blissfully hula hooping for hours, and your mom's like, Ronald, Ronald, your friend Donnie's on the telegram. <laughs> and you fucking run inside and fucking you have running water for the first time. I don't know what the hell it's like over there. I would have done anything to get a telegram, first of all, because I was obsessed <laughs> with telegrams when I was a kid, so that's fascinating. Didn't have a hula hoop, never could pull it off. I did have a water pump out. Outside, uh, uh-huh. I was I was raised in Inyat, Washington. Look at the folks. Um, but I, uh, in turn, I will give you. In, in speaking of, we never hold anything back on the show. I'll give you a glimpse into the sad world of Ronnie Evans. Uh, let's see, uh, circa 1987. I remember my dad burning a pile of brush from that he raked up in the yard, and me uh, building a little stage out of cordwood and pretending that I was a member of KISS because I had pyrotechnics. <laughs> Cry or bad. laugh if you want. I accept either <laughs> reaction, folks. That was... Listen, I had nothing growing... And, uh, 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 that's not true. I mean, I had a handful of toys, and uh, but my nearest neighbor was four miles away. I didn't... You know, I wasn't out playing with other kids. I was by myself. That's where... My crazy imagination developed, and it's yeah. sad to look at on one level, but on the other hand, that's where I learned 
to not be lonely. I'm not somebody that suffers from loneliness. I miss people from time to time, and I miss certain sure. situations. But Ron W. Evans does not get lonely, and I'm glad for that. I would hate to be one of these miserable creatures that suffer from loneliness. Yeah. I'm all I need, motherfuckers. Uh, I want lots of things, but I'm all I need. And that's because I didn't have shit when I grew up. So it's a double-edged sword. You know, I would have done anything to have closer friends and, um, you know, a lot of toys or more money as a family and not be called booger boots. Did I tell you tell you the booger boots situation? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I figured I did. Oh. Goop on the boots, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do it to your kids. Anyway, moving on. God damn, I don't even know where we are after booger boots. <laughs> We're in therapy. And I, for one, feel fucking fantastic right now. I don't know about you, but I've, I've gotten some heavy shit off my chest. <laughs> Talked about some dead friends, booger boots, some people we were poor in any act, not having any friends around. <laughs> Talk to imaginary people. Jumping through smoke and stuff, and I'm strong, and I don't need anybody. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm good. I'm fine. Mm. Orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's gotten monkey heavy. Oh, fucking Kanye West. Question for uh, this star recently came to the defense of Bill Cosby and all the sexual assault charges, claiming only God could judge him. Uh, the answer was R. Fucking Kelly. Nobody got that right, and John Mark loses a point. Ooh, who did I choose? I went with. Uh, you. Boy. Guess what, Ron? Guess what? What's per use. You played for yourself. You won for yourself. Ron with well, two points is the winner tonight. I'm all I need. <laughs> You're all oh, you need. I really feel bad about that. That's almost. Oh, oh it's almost. Stop the press. Stop 100%. the press. Stop the press. A rag tag. I lied. I fucking lied I to you. Did you do the you know math what? wrong? Because Lyle got a point too. I tied you bitches. Ooh. Actually, I feel good. Now I can feel good about that. Yeah. So you guys, and there's nobody yet. See, so you guys just uh, shake it out there. Nice. <laughs> we'll shake, shake it out. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know, but I like it. But I think it's erotic. I like it a lot. All right. Well, good stuff. Uh, you you guys, well, Lyle, you weighed in on the Bill Cosby thing at one point, and it seemed like you were, but, but, I won't say sympathetic <laughs> to the guy, but you were hesitant to throw stones. Now, I'm hesitant to throw stones whenever somebody gets accused of something, because anybody can do that. But... Uh, what do you guys, what do you guys feel about this? It's hard to know what to do in a situation like this because I am so cautious of jumping on the bandwagon and, and again, throwing stones. We don't know. We weren't there. We have no idea. There's a lot of money involved with uh, somebody who's rich and famous. So we all know that there are people out there that would come forward and just maybe get a buck, but you can't. You you can't really weigh any of that when you're talking about rape, right? You kind of have to put that aside and, and really try to look into it. But as just a bystander, why do you guys uh, weigh in on that? Do you get a feeling one way or the other, or is it just like, eh, whatever? you got to remember, it's Hollywood, man. So anything you, goes? Is that what you're saying? Well, if you're rich, <laughs> you're powerful, most people want to be around or with you, you know? So who knows if it wasn't a, you know, party and you just got too fucked up and shit happened, but then didn't remember and then, no, you raped me. You know, I don't know. You know, mm. who knows? I don't isn't know. it, isn't it technically, maybe it's a state thing. I don't know if there's a federal thing or not, but it's, I know in some places it's illegal to fuck somebody if they're drunk. Did you know that? Oh, I actually have a really uh, side side note on that. I have a fun quiz coming up about. I think we've covered rape. some of this before. <laughs> but rape, no, about legal and illegal things in states. Oh uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna. We've co- we've covered co- covered some of that, but I've got a some fun of them, quiz yeah. everyone. Yeah, nice. but uh, I think that uh, there isn't. <laughs> Yeah, I totally lost my train of thought. No, there, you sorry. can say orangutan. It's fine. <laughs> We're long. It's, been said, it's been said too many times. It's over. I think it's I'm an impossible it. question to answer. Honestly, no, oh, uh, I remember. Uh, I don't think there's enough money in the world to organize enough people of this different variety of walks of life into a conspiracy against Bill Cosby. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. At the same it, time, I think that people will do anything for money. So. I, no, I'm not leaning toward that. I'm not leaning toward the, these people are making it up for money. But I will believe that people will do anything for money. Um, it's a sad thing that we have created in our own society. Uh, it's not necessarily that, too. It's drugs, too. I mean, it's, you know, I've I've partied with some, some people that, you know, they would probably not do that if they weren't on drugs, you know. Mm, yeah. So. 
Well, like, but like I said, I mean, the reason I brought up the whole thing about it being illegal to fuck somebody that's inebriated is that's that's not an excuse. That's it's not an excuse that this person was fucked up, so she doesn't. Remember. You now, this is something that almost nobody practices, but. If we are all doing things, quote unquote, right, we are not (laughs) engaging in sexual activity with someone that's inebriated. Now, think about how fucked up that is. But at the same time, that is how (laughs) you can get into uh, some situation. Now, I'm not saying that this has anything to do with the cosmic thing, but uh, (laughs) it's illegal because (laughs) there can be some snafus that arise. It's a tricky situation. I think I just thought of the slogan, the campaign for the, uh, the, like, the thing that campaigns for against that like mothers against drunk driving or you know uh-huh. it'd be zzz means zzz <laughs> zzz means zzz oh my Hell. god i have to do it for the graphic for the show ronabornfilms.com the space oh, that you could com and fuck, do find god <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a pretty, pretty good. special level. Pretty good. Well, actually, I don't know if it's good or if it's horrible, <laughs> but it made me laugh. So, yeah, that'll be the graphic for the show this week. Uh, <laughs> join us on Facebook and check out our new video podcast on YouTube. Uh, you can find the link on the spacepod.yuka.com or uh, our Facebook page or look it up on YouTube, I suppose. If you put in Tales from the Space Pod, it'll be one of the ones that come on. Other than that, tune in next week. We will be talking about 9 11. And let us know of anything Ooh. you would like us to do with the video podcast now that we can all see each other and you can see us we got things planned like uh you know charades and uh you know maybe playing some board games that require sight uh, some crackery. goofy stuff lots of fun stuff so but if you have any particular suggestions and yes we will be getting on the ladies of the space pod uh, i know a lot of you instantly as soon as we as soon as you saw that there are cameras involved were emailing me how about those ladies of the space pod <laughs> those are not the tits we want to see <laughs> absolutely not and they will be coming on shortly so until then we'll see you guys bye bye, bye. Attention to my faculties. Pay no attention to my faculties. <laughs>